welcome to our first book review on the Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy channel. And Bob Cook is going to review a series of his favourite books. And the book Bob is going to review tonight is a seminal book in the world of psychotherapy, isn't it, Bob? Tell us which book. It is Eric Byrne's first book where he actually describes his first personality uh, model of ego states in 1961. And he named this first model, if you like, in the world of psychotherapy, um, his transaction analysis model. And the book is called Transaction Analysis in Psychotherapy, 1961 by Sage Publishers. Okay, and for those of you who uh, wanted to know what the book looks like, in a second we're going to see a, um, a picture come onto the screen so you can have a look at it, and we will put um, a link in the bar below, in the comments bar below, so if you want to buy it or look at it in a bit more detail, you can click on that. So, Bob, why is it such a seminal book? Well, it's Eric Byrne's first book, where he started to put his ideas down um, on what he called transaction analysis. In fact, he first um, developed his ideas on personality and personality theory um, in 1956, 1957. He started to look at the ideas of intuition and then he came up with his famous personality model describing how we actually come from three different parts of our cells and therefore transact um, in terms of which part we're actually coming from. And he put uh, this all together in a book, put his uh, ideas down in this book, and he called the book Transaction Analysis in Psychotherapy. And it became a, full, a forerunner for many other TA books. But this is when TA was first originally created. Um, that's why this book, which I'm going to bring up in a minute, is so important. It's like, you know, in the world of Gestalt psychotherapy or in the world of existential psychotherapy, there are certain seminal books by the people who created this particular model. So TA was created 70 odd years ago by this man. And he put all his ideas together and he wrote this book. Now, this book is where all the ideas on TA, which we've developed, over the last 50, 60, 70 years, originally the original book, Rory. Wow. So before this book, TA didn't exist. So this it didn't exist. So this book really is the seminal book. It's the seed that grew the 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 flower or yes. the or the or the garden, if we want to uh, yes, use a garden the garden phrase. All these hundreds of books yeah. that followed on TA that developed his seminal ideas developed his model personality, created many other ideas off these original ideas, but this is the book that spawned the transactional analysts of generations. Wow. Wow. And how relevant is it to students studying TA today? It is the book ah. to get. Ah. You need to get this book. Now, usually, of course, as with most great creators, and I can think of many of the people who wrote seminal books from Eric Erickson to Freud to Margaret Mahler to um, uh, Fritz Perls to, we can think of all these great originators. Their books, their original books where they put the ideas forward tend to be written quite densely and academically. So if you don't want an academic book, uh, sorry, if you want an academic book, this is the book to buy. If you don't want an academic book, actually buy some of the more accessible books by the later authors. But if you want to read The Godfather of TA, and if you could just bear with, you know, um, reading a chapter at a time, many different times over till you've got the actual gist of this, you will um, have such a gem such a gem you just have to stay with the academia if you like the quite dense writings um but it is the original person's thoughts the original person's writing 
the original person's ideas that come alive for the first time in that psychotherapy generation. Because Eric Byrne came on the back of the humanistic revolution. And as you know, because I know you're big in the world of crime centered world, he came on the back of who? Carl Rogers. Yes. Carl Rogers came forward with his wonderful ideas on actualization, his ideas of how you actually um, talk to somebody face to face, uh, not put them on a couch, not this one up, one down position. And the humanistic. Uh, revolution which was spawned in the 1950s in the United States then you had Gestalt psychotherapy and on the back of those ideas came transaction analysis Wow so it's, it seems almost during that time there was a rich um, a rich thinking development almost like a, a movement within psychotherapy that spawned many different uh, uh, directions but what you're saying is is that this particular book was was one written slightly later and took psychotherapy in a completely different down a different avenue yeah it was in the humanistic tra transition uh, tradition but of course it has its has its psychodynamic roots in other words Eric Byrne for most of his early career not only was this psychiatrist but he was very much um, into forging ideas, mm. the ideas of the id, the ideas of the superego, the ideas of the mature ego, and more, more than anything else, the ideas of the unconscious. Mm. So he really loved Freud's um, unconscious model of the personality and the methods of psychoanalysis, free interpretation, etc., etc. And Eric Byrne himself trained in psychoanalysis. This is how um, his heritage is, mm. very much from the psychodynamic world. In the late 1940s in America, in Carmel in San Francisco, he was writing his first book, A, a Brief Outline uh, of Psychiatry, and he brought some of Freud's ideas alive. So very much he was very much a believer in the past affects the present mm. and the psychodynamic theory. However, in his teachings by 1956, he started to um, put forward some of his ideas about developing a, a, mo a personal living model of consciousness, not unconsciousness, where a therapist or a counselor could trace the behavioral manifestations of internal phenomena, observe them, and make interventions, which would affect cure. Mm. Now, it's different from the unconscious model of Freud, which is very much you, uh, you concentrate on the first three or four years of life, you concentrate on the unconscious desires and longings, the driven mechanical model of Freud, which is far more vague, far more interpretive, far more one-up, one-down position with the analyst making interpretations. Eric Byrne was an alive model, uh, tracing the transactions in the consciousness, not the unconscious processes, and helping counsellors and therapists have tools to actually make interventions at a behavioural level, which would affect cure. And you've often said, Bob, when, when we've talked, you know, not in interviews, but you know, when we've met up over a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, that. That Freud, that um, that uh, that Burn was the original kind of CBT person. That, Correct. Yeah, because he, more than anything else, anyone else of that tradition in the nineteen fifties, early nineteen sixties, wanted cure to happen in the first session. He said a therapist needs to go into the first session thinking. How are we going to affect cure in the first 20 minutes, in the first 50 minutes, in the first two sessions, three sessions, four sessions? He, he was the um, antithesis of the psychoanalytic person. It yes. take eight years, nine years, ten years analyzing the unconscious. He moved away from that, and he wanted to affect cure much quicker mm. from a conscious model of the personality. Hence, he created the idea of parent, adult, child 
which is the first personality model written up as side Freud. Quite different from Freud, though. It was looking at a conscious process where, you, where the therapist could observe the manifestations of transactions at a conscious level, and therefore the therapist could make the effective transactions to help cure in the here and now, not having to go back through regression to where the person was two, three, or four. So the book really sets the ground out for this new idea that uh, Bernhard, it really kind of put his stake in the ground, if you were, drew his line in the sand, once for a better phrase, and said, Look, <clears throat> this, is, this is the direction of this particular therapy. And it moved away in some elements, not all, Psychologist. but some elements from traditional Freudian techniques. And as you said, focusing purely on the subconscious process and, and maybe kind of moving around for years and years without any growth. It was, a, it was, it was an attitude of the therapist to say, right from, right, right from the off, we're going to try and help you with this problem as opposed to stumble upon something maybe through, through traditional methods of psychoanalysis. Yes, Eric Byrne, Eric Byrne's wonderful message was we need to strengthen up the robust adult ego state in the here and now, not go back through regressive techniques where we're going to help the person hopefully become aware of their unconscious processes. And that was Freud's early idea of cure, by the way. Whereas Freud, uh, Byrne said, no, we are going to help the person be aware of the different parts of the self and concentrate particularly in the here and now on developing a robust adult where they can take charge of their own destiny and make the necessary changes with the aid of the TA therapist. Have you got any favourite chapters in the book? Any the book. any chapters that you think, oh, this is just this is just you know gold, pure gold. Several. <laughs> the first. Now the first chapter outlines his ideas of a personality model. In other words, how we become the way we are. And he called this model back then his ideas. Um, he called them structural analysis. By analyzing the different parts of the self that we're transacting from and helping the person themselves understanding which part of themselves they're transacting from. The client takes charge of their own destiny in a way because they know where they're coming from. Because before they might have thought they were coming from their unconscious processes, say in the child ego state, but actually they're coming from their adult or the parent. So the therapist has these tools to help the client for the first time be aware of where they're coming from and how they can change. Now, what a wonderful model that is. If I said to you, Rory, Right, here we go. You're coming from this part of your ego state. You might think you're coming from that part of your ego state, but what you need actually to do is strengthen your adult up in the here and now and take charge. And this is what you need to do. Yep. Wonderful model. Absolutely, Bob. Well, I, I, you know, I can hear the passion around this text for you, this book for you. It's obviously, it's obviously has a lot of meaning for you. And, um, you know, if I was a psychotherapy student training with TA, I know I would be rushing out to, to buy it and to maybe um, work my way through it. It sounds like it's not an easy book to read, but one that once you put the effort into it, um, you're going to get some real gems of wisdom out of. Yes. You see, throughout my career, and it's 30 years now, what clients love about the idea of transaction analysis, which is outlined for the first time in this book, is the accessibility of language. In other words, his model, which was, I quickly, I just want to repeat again, that you come from a, three parts of the self, what he called the parent part, the adult part and the child part. Now, 
over 30 years without a doubt, clients love that model because it's so accessible mm. to understand where they're coming from. Everybody's had a parent, everybody's had a childhood, and everybody wants to have a mature adult or a robust adult to be able to take charge of their lives and their destiny and change. Mm. And mm. clients understand that as a psychological model of how they become the way they become and what to do to change. Now, isn't that a wonderful model? It's, it's, it is it's a fantastic model. Without a doubt, TA is a fantastic model. I, I know we spoke quite often about it. It feels like the book really kind of brings that alive. And, uh, you know, I would say that if I was a TA student, I'd be knocking down the door of the, of the, uh, the book um, of the of the bookseller to try and try and get a copy so bob cook thank you so much for sharing that book and just the passion you have around it and this is going to be just the first of many interviews that we have where you discuss your favorite texts and the meanings behind them. one more thing about this book just one more i know before i go before you go <laughs> and that is in this book he outlines some case studies of how therapists can use transaction analysis and help the clients understand where they're coming from in terms of parent, adult, child, to be able to take charge of their own destiny for maybe the first times in their lives. Incredible. What else can you ask for? And this is the original, original this is the original writer. <laughs> So do you want me to put the book up or have you got it there? Well, all we'll do is as we come to the end of this interview, we'll put we'll put the book up and you can see it in front of you now and we'll put a link into yeah. the description below. And as always, yeah. Bob, a real pleasure interviewing you. Your, your enthusiasm is really, really infectious and I'm sure that anybody who views this will be grateful not only for your knowledge but for that enthusiasm. Bob Cook, thank you very much. And thank you, Roy. And go out and buy the book. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.